What's up everyone? We are one day away from the next eviction of Big Brother 23 and that eviction may be a blind side if Xavier gets his way. We've got so so much to talk about folks so welcome to your live feed update. Folks, right before we get started, please, please, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and please hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps me more than you even know, folks. Uh, the YouTube algorithm is a scary Bermuda Triangle of YouTube that is incredibly difficult to understand, but I understand that hitting the like button and hitting the subscribe button really, really helps me out. So, folks, if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, folks, now, the question of the day, it's a pretty straightforward one, and it's really going to sort of get a gauge for what we're all feeling like as fans of Big Brother and fans of the game at this point in the Final Four. Who would you like to see evicted this week? It's straight up as that you can answer Arza, you can answer Big D, you can answer Kylan, you can even answer Xavier. We're doing this hypothetically as if you know nobody's safe. Um, I just want to know as a general kind of consensus who would everybody ideally love to see leave the house this week? You know, who would who would you basically the final three? Who would you like those to be and for it to become the final three? One person has to leave, and if you could choose that person out of everybody, who would it be? Alright guys, let's jump right into the live feed updates and for a good majority of the day, literally from the morning all the way to noon and then moving all the way up to dinner time uh, and going into the evening, there really was not much game talk at all. Of course the game talk did kick in in true Big Brother fashion late in the night, so we'll talk about that shortly, but the majority of talk throughout the day just revolved around dating quite a lot on the outside world and talking about some ex-house guests and, you know, I bet they were saying, you know, life's gone back to normal for Frenchie and Travis and Brent, however they think that Brent has gone on Love Island, we know that's not true true but I stand by the thought of just I feel like I can't help but feel like Brent initially auditioned for Love Island um, and then the producers kind of just went hey you're a better fit for Big Brother I'm probably totally wrong but it felt like that because Brent didn't seem to want to care to play the game he was just trying to pursue Alyssa and then Alyssa shut him down and said I just want to be friends didn't even want that he was like I want nothing to do with you and then he moved on to Hannah and then Hannah didn't it was just and the cycle would have repeated if he hadn't been evicted week three. So, yes, he definitely should have been on Love Island instead of Big Brother. Um, so, But we obviously know he didn't go on Love Island, even though they think that could have happened. And uh, there was talk of the amazing race amongst house guests, and of course, Survivor. And folks, if you are, of course, a Survivor fan, you'll know it's the big day today. Survivor 41, it's the return of Survivor, which is so, 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 so exciting after a long hiatus since Survivor winners at war. We are finally getting Survivor Season 41, which is going to be incredibly exciting. I can't wait to watch that, folks. Let me know in the comment section if you're going to be watching Survivor tonight. Alright, folks, now let's talk about Xavier's extravagant big plan, which I am very much on board with. I think as, as, a, as a viewer, I'm on board with it um, in, a, in a matter of speaking. He wants to blindside Kyland on Thursday night, tomorrow night. He wants it to be a complete surprise. He doesn't want Kyland to expect it coming. Um, and even though it's the final four, I can imagine people going, oh, you can just tell him it's fine, you know, and uh, he'll take it well. You know, there's nothing you can do about it anyway. No. What I like about Xavier is realising that the strategy behind this and there's blame. You know, when you take somebody out the game, there is blame. It rhymes. That should that should be a phrase. If you take somebody out the game, there will be blame. And he wants to put the blame on Big D. Of course, Big D will be the person who's casting the sole vote to evict should the veto not be used. Um, there is potential of the veto being used on Arza because he doesn't because Xavier doesn't fully trust Big D to cast the vote on Kylan, so it could swap places for Arza to be the person to evict Kylan. But either way, Kylan is going to be going this week. Like a 99.9% .9 chance he'll be going. I always leave that tiny little fraction of a percentage because expect the unexpected, but 99.9% .9 chance he's going to be going. So he wants to do this blindside and I'm going to make Kylan feel comfortable all week and say, you're not going anywhere and just kind of making him feel really, really safe. And then he wants Big D to be the person to pull the trigger tomorrow night, totally putting the blame on, um, on, on Big D because Kylan has shown himself to be a very emotional player. Um, and he takes things quite personally, I think. And going into the jury house, Xavier is obviously going to want Carland, you know, rooting against Big D. You know, I would say on the face of it, Carland will go, oh, that's annoying Big D, I'm not voting Big D. And, and he'll be annoyed at Big D at first. But then when the jury talks and does all the, you know, the round table and kind of reflects on the game, Carland will go, he'll still have the madness on Big D and go, Xavier actually masterminded that, but he won't be as pissed off at him because it was Big D who pulled the trigger. So it's quite masterful in my opinion. It's a basic move, but it's a it's a classic. It's a blind side and it can benefit your game extremely well if you can execute it well. And especially in the final four, we rarely get a final four blind side. So a final four blind side in which, uh, I feel like old school had more final four blind sides and um, it really has that shock effect because it's, you know, there's four people in the house, three people are in on, in on the blind side and one person goes, kaboom when when it happens so um x is basically trying to 
say we need to blindside him and I don't think Big D wants to Big D wants to let him know and all that sort of stuff but X is really really going to town on him in, in classic lawyer style he's he's working him and, and advising him what's the best thing to do and you know lawyers can do that very well they advise you what's the best thing to do and the right things to say and you know Big D has been shown to be very easy to swear and he listens to people who are in power and he listens to people who um, he sees as somebody as, as, as I guess a threat he obeys the threat in a way, but he still feels like he's a huge threat. So it all goes hand in hand. So he's obviously, you know, Big D's kind of saying, oh, we don't need to do this, but X is really, really working the angle. And Oz is going to do whatever X wants uh, her to do because that's what Oz does. So that's likely going to happen, folks. Tomorrow night, Carland is probably going to be surprised live and find out. Pff, mind blown blindside moment and the blame and the blame will be put on Big D. Because X is saying the only reason we have to do this is because... Well, the, 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 the reason and he's saying to Azra and Big D as to why they should blindside him is because, obviously, we know Carlin's a talker, and he's, I think he said something along the lines of, you know, if we make him feel like he's going to be leaving the house, he's going to be up your ass 24-7. And it's true. Carlin loves to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and keep going. So the fact that X has actually kind of got this two-sided thing to it where to Azra and Big D he's saying this needs to be done because Carlin talks way too much is the reasoning, but the real reasoning is because it's going to benefit his game if Big D's the person to pull the trigger and take the blame. And Big D seems quite oblivious to that. So, um, you know, I, I think X is playing very, very well right now. And I've talked about this multiple times over the past uh, over the past week where I've said, you know, it's to the point now, because I'm a strong believer in if you win, you win. And, you know, even if Big D or Raz was to win this season, I'd still have to go, okay, well done, because you win the game it's simple as that however in my opinion in a season in which we have seen quite strong gameplay it would be nice to finish off with someone who has played a decently strong game and that would be Xavier out of the four people left so with him doing something like a blindside in the final four that's a nice little thing to add to the resume and another reason why Xavier is on track to win this game Big D was talking to Arza about this vote off of Carland. Now, of course, Big D, I think, is ready to do it, but he doesn't feel comfortable doing it. Um, Arza seems to be extremely confident, and she's almost gagging to be the person to take out Carland. In a way, I kind of feel like I want Xavier to pull Arza off the block and put Big D up, because I do think, you know... Aza can build the resume more and if she's the person to take out Kyland even though it's her who takes the hit at least she's doing it with confidence and she's doing it with um, the the kind of um, panache that you want somebody to have in the big brother house with a winning game now whilst I don't think Aza has enough to call herself a winning game yet if she sits next to Big D in the final two I would happily almost not not necessarily happily but I would I'd be more okay with her winning the game at that point, had she be the person to put, or if she was the person to pull the trigger on Kyle. And I mean, heck, if Arza somehow won the final head of household competition, not saying that's going to happen, but if she did, she could pull the trigger on X, and then she took out Kyle and X and Hannah. She took out half the cookout uh, in the in the final six, so that'd be enough for her to win the game. And Big D had probably sat there thinking he had the game in the bag in the final two. Uh, they'll be doing all the jury questions and Big D will be claiming how he's this mastermind of the game and how he controlled this section and controlled this section. And you'll have Tiffany and X sat there going, Big D, no, we were the people who were running the show. We did all this work. And um, I can truly, I know it sounds bad, but I can truly imagine the jury just laughing, laughing at, at, at these at these responses. I mean, heck, it could it could even happen to Arza. I just, I, I, I just think if it depends really what the approach is in which you go into the final two. Let's 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 talk about that for a moment because I feel like that's a super important moment that people often don't talk about and don't appreciate much is the questioning in the final two. So many people have lost the game on finale night because of the way they talked to the jurors and the way they answered the questions. So Aza and Big D need to because I don't think Big D's going to realize it. I think Big D's going to be out there if he because I do think Big D's going to be in the final two. Um, if Big D makes it there, I think he's going to be the person who's claiming I ran this and I did this and I controlled this and I I built this and I am the mastermind. I am Doctor Will. You know that's that he's that kind of that kind of character. If Big D needs to realize, he can he needs to ground himself. The best thing you can have in the final two is being aware. Is being aware of your game and trying to find the faults of the other person and nitpicking them apart and 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 because people got people people say oh you know you've got to have a friendly final two you know where it's uh it's a situation in which um you know you you show respect to them uh uh no you are here to win the game i think you need to throw that person under the bus but also you need to be aware if you are deluded you might as well 
sign the check over to the other person because if you can't articulate your own game and you can't realize your own faults then you're going to lose the game it's as simple as that that's how i see it and uh you know so that's why i feel big d needs to become come into this final two a lot more grounded and go yes okay whilst i wasn't at the forefront of strategy it's not going to happen because he thinks he was um i played in a, a strong social game which i entertained the house all that sort of stuff We'll probably talk about this deeper as we get into next week's videos. But uh, and then moving on to Arza. Arza is someone who I feel is more aware than Big D. So that's why I do think she can beat Big D in the final two. Especially if she has that kind of resume in which if she's the person to take Kyland out. If she wins the final H2H and obviously she took Hannah out. That's enough to articulate. Whilst Big D's probably going to be going on one saying he's the mastermind and everything. Arza can go, I did this. And she can probably go, I feel like she she's going to acknowledge that she didn't play mastermind game which she didn't and that's good because let's think about paul from bb19 for a second i mean heck paul lost the game twice he came in the same placement with the same amount of votes because he arrived in the final two acting i know like listen i think paul's a fantastic player but i his jury management is the one thing that lets him down because he arrives at the final two and it's almost like he feels the game should be handed to him on a silver platter he feels as though he has been the mastermind, which he was, but the people who are butthurt in the jury d don't acknowledge that. They often ruin the game in my eyes, those people, but it's all part and parcel of Big Brother. You've got to be able to manipulate those people like Dr. Will did. You know, you've got to be able to make sure those people feel like they owe you something. Whereas, I feel like Paul's attitude was kind of like he felt like they owed him something without making them feel like they owed him something so you've got to have that both make them feel like they owe you something so they do give you it if that makes sense that might have sounded like a whole lot of hogwash but i feel like y'all get the get the gist of it haven't seen paul lost twice um it's all about awareness like i said it's all about understanding your game and being able to articulate it and also picking apart the faults of the other person's game there's several more components to it but i feel like those are very key components in winning the game when you get to the final two that is all of your live feed updates for today, folks. I thoroughly hope you all enjoyed watching. It was a bit of a slow news day yesterday in the Big Brother house. Um, like I said, lots of just kind of general life talk uh, until there was the moment of X's big plan um, trying to inflict that on Azar and Big D and also chatting about the final two and speeches and all that sort of stuff. So there really wasn't a lot to go off, but of course... We always find something to talk about on here, folks. So um, I really still hope everybody did enjoy watching today's video. Even though we didn't have an awful lot to talk about, I guess we got to deep dive more into um, into, into into the things that were discussed. But folks, I really hope you all did enjoy watching. Uh, I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on this week so far in the comments section below. Um, do you think Xavier has been a good HOH? Should he pull Arza off the block and make her pull the trigger on Kyland? Or should it be Big D? Or would you like to see Big D leave the house? Just who would you like to see leave? Who would you like to see just everything, folks? Let me know in the comments section below. This is... I love Big Brother chat with y'all, so just let me know in the comments section below. But folks, I will say as I always do, make sure that you're staying safe, staying positive and staying healthy out there and be kind to one another. That's a really important one, be kind to one another. But folks, in the meantime, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. But until your next live feed update, I've been your host Tom Vasey. Good night.